Jose Manuel Ugarte. And where are you currently employed? At Texas A&M International University Police Department. Can you please identify what, com what comes out in this photo? Looks like the weapon. Okay, and by weapon you mean a firearm? Yes, sir. And that was a firearm gun. that was recovered? Yes, sir. All right. HK-40 caliber handgun. Okay, and aside from the handgun, what else do we see? A magazine. A magazine? Yes, sir, on the side. Okay, and this magazine was in relation to this firearm? Yes, sir. All right. I'm showing you Exhibit 164. What do you see here? With the handgun with, with one live round. Okay. That's one live round? Yes, sir. Where was that round located? In the chamber. In the chamber of the, the weapon? Yes, sir. Dr. Corrine Elizabeth Stern. And what is your occupation? I am the chief medical examiner for Webb County, Texas. Ms. Ramirez arrived to my office with several wounds uh, that were uh, appeared to be caused by, by gunshots. So she had a gunshot entrance wound. It was on the right side of the jaw in the mandible. That's the lower part of the jaw. So the upper part's your maxilla. This is the mandible, the lower jaw. So it was on the, on the right side in the lower jaw. Um, it was um, a round defect and surrounding the entrance wound where the bullet actually pierced through was gunpowder stippling. That just means they're unburnt grains of gunpowder and that surrounded the entrance wound. You okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone remain where you're at. We'll go ahead and excuse the, at least the juror. Now, I, in your report, um, were you able to determine her cause of death? Yes. And uh, what was that? Multiple gunshot wounds. And I, well, I also noted that in your report you did not, uh, you specified that there was no medical intervention. What is the purpose of that? That means it, she, she didn't live long enough for uh, paramedics or EMTs to um, come in and try to save her life. She had several lacerations. A laceration is like a tear, like when you tear the skin, not a cut like with a knife, but an actual tear, typically caused by blunt force trauma. So she had a, a laceration on her left parietal scalp, that's this area right here, okay, it measured three and a half inches. And she had another laceration of the mid upper forehead, it measured two and a quarter inches. She had an additional laceration of the right side of the forehead. It measured four and a half inches. And then she had a purple contusion just lateral to the right eye, so right in this area. A contusion is just a fancy word for a bruise. Um, she, she had a, an abrasion overlying the left lateral mandible. You know, we talked about the mandible, the bottom jawbone. An abrasion is like a scrape, like when you skin your knee. Okay, so she had an abrasion on her mandible on the on the left side. She also had an additional abrasion on her temporal scalp. Your temporal scalp are these areas right here. <coughs> and uh, she had an additional one half inch laceration on her right upper eyelid. Uh, she also had a one half inch abrasion lateral to the right eye as well. Um, she had an abrasion of the right lateral face, it, still on the face, but kind of underneath the right earlobe, kind of in this area right here. And she had a reddish purple contusion of the left, left lateral posterior neck, kind of from the side extending onto the back of the neck. This is a gunshot entrance wound on the back of the head. Does it have the presence of any soot or stippling? No, there is no soot or gunpowder stippling surrounding this wound. Okay, what does that indicate? That it was a distant gunshot wound. Now, Dr. Stern, uh, with regards to all four autopsies, were there any similarities as to their injuries? Well, they all had gunshot wounds, and all the gunshot wounds were neck and head. What about uh, the cal the projectiles that were recovered? 
All the projectiles that were recovered were large caliber copper jacketed bullets. And the toxicology uh, results, was there any consistency with them? Yes, all four of them had positive toxicology, um, a combination of cocaine and or heroin and Xanax. I'm Ernesto Javier Salinas. Everybody knows me as EJ. And uh, are you a peace officer? Yes. Um, when you were at the stripes, you were able to open the door? Yes. It was not locked? It wasn't locked. Do you recall there was a key? I don't recall seeing a key. Did you directly or indirectly promise Mr. Ortiz anything in exchange for his statement? No, no promises were made. Based on your experience, do you believe he waived his right? Yes. Did he ever ask for an attorney? No. Did he ever ask to stop the interview? No. It's 5.45. We're going to go ahead and recess for the day.